This is a great recipe on how to bake pumpkin sugar cookies. Well, good morning. Welcome back to A Country Boy Can Cook. <clears throat> Today, we're going to make some pumpkin sugar cookies. And I try to make my cookies so they're thin and crispy. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the chewy cookies. I just never have. I, I guess because I... My mother always baked these, and she, well, she baked sugar cookies. That's the recipe I remember, and so that's what I'm making today, but I'm gonna do an additional um, pumpkin spice, uh, pumpkin pie spice. So uh, it's really just three ingredients. It's butter, sugar, and flour, and that gets your basic sugar cookie. You know, get some butter at room temperature, a little soft, and I'm gonna put mine in the microwave for a minute because I just brought it out of the uh, um, the fridge it's uh, 10 tablespoons so it's one stick and it, you know most most butter sticks are, are marked on the back and two little portions on the two tablespoons on the neck so that gets you your amount and you don't want it liquid but you want it pretty soft and now the microwave and I'm just gonna put mine in uh, my old favorite plastic mixing bowl and uh, put the microwave until it's soft I will add my uh, sugar at that point and the flour and, and uh, but the first thing I'll add is the uh, pumpkin spice so it gets all incorporated it so it gets all throughout there so let me uh, show you what we got going here <clears throat> yeah there's my butter you can see it's, it's a whole stick plus two I've got uh, my flour got one cup one third a cup of sugar and my cinnamon pumpkin pie spice here. So, let me put this, uh, let me get the stuff in the microwave and get it softened and we'll go from there. All right, I'm back. I microwaved that for about 20 seconds. You can see it just started to melt just a little bit, so it's super soft. Everybody's microwave is different, but just melt it so it's starting to uh, uh, come into a liquid state. And you want to stir that around just to get it broke up. Get this under here so you can see what I'm doing here. Mash around. You can use a whisk, big spoon, a spatula. It, it don't matter. I use this old wooden spoon. Spoon with well, some spoon. It's a flat. I guess a wooden spatula. I made in high school. It was under the direction of Mr. Roy Crawford. He is my high school ag teacher. I was in it for four years. I was, of course, in the FFA because that was part. You know, you could be in if you were an ag, you could be in FFA. I was a Green Hand Sentinel treasurer or something next year the vice president and then I was president of FA, FFA which was great it got me a scholarship to college veterinary medicine uh, took the first year at a junior college to get some of my classes out of the way found out that I like skipping and going to the lake better uh, I was married and uh, it, I was running a business at the same time I had a service station yeah, I know. I was 20 years old, so I had a lot going on for you young dude. So anyway, Mr. Roy Crawford, we could build any project out of wood, and, and this is the one that I built. This old spat, spatula, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of worn down on the sides, but you know, it's 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 just made out of an old piece of pine, and it works wonderful. All right, let's see if we can get this down a little bit, so we can see what's going on here. All right, so I'm going to add my pumpkin pie spice. You could add cinnamon. You, you could not add anything and just make sugar cookies at this point. I'm going to add about, probably about a little over, a little over a tablespoon. I want them to taste like cinnamon and sugar and pumpkin, everything nice. I think there's a rhyme, a rhyme that goes with that. So I'm going to stir this around. And 
tell it's pretty incorporated. These are so easy. These are good for kids. That's the first time I made cookies. And we didn't call them sugar cookies. My mother never called them sugar cookies. And she just always called them cookies. Y'all want some cookies? And she'd bake these things up. My dad locked them. He would come in late in the evenings and have a cup of coffee and have one of these sugar cookies. And she never added anything else uh, to flavor. You can At this point, you can add a little bit of vanilla. I'm not going to because I want the pumpkin spice to stick out real bold. Let me get the sugar into it and I'll bring you right back. All right. As you can see, I've got one third a cup of sugar. I, I, I put it down, it's early, and one cup of flour. And I'm going to attempt to put this sugar in here. And you will probably get to see the old dude make a mess. I want to mix it in first. That's so far so good. What already smells good. What, what the hell? Oh, excuse me. Huh, what the hey? I did it. Alright. Let's incorporate the sugar to it. And I'm not through with the pumpkin yet. I'll show you what I'm going to do at the end. You just want to mix until it's pretty fluffy. Need some more fuel. Let me grab a drink of coffee here. All right. That's pretty good right there. All right. I see the old dude make, make another mess. See here. This is some butcher paper I have. I like to work biscuits on it. Uh, all right. All right. We're going to show people how to be chefy. Oh, yeah. Ah, perfect chefing moment. Alright. Now, incorporate this. You can use a blender, and you can throw it on yourself like I just did. I was going to say, if you're using a blender, start off kind of slow. A hand mixer, I should say, not a blender. You put it in a blender, I don't know what the heck would happen. It's gonna make a cake mix. It's gonna be thick like a cookie dough, not like a cake mix. It was runny like a cake mix while ago, so. Let me get another drink of fuel and I'll mix this up and bring you right back. All right, back with you. So I've got my, and I've changed lights. I just, I actually have a couple of automotive work lights with uh, LED bulbs. Anyway, I moved them around so you can see this batter better. So I just got it mixed up. It, it, it's starting to form little balls. If you mash it together, it sticks. And that's what you want. So you can get in there and see what's going on here. There you go. I remember... Uh, one fun morning, um, my mother was cooking and she said that I, I, my dad worked in Dallas. We had this big ranch or farm or whatever you want to call it. And uh, he always worked in Dallas, I always had two or three jobs. I guess that's how we could afford the place. So anyway, uh, he would leave like at five in the morning 
go to Dallas and uh, excuse me, I had to get a drink there. Um, so while he was gone, or after he left, I mean, I, I was getting up to eat breakfast and little brother and sister, they got up a little bit later. They were special. <laughs> special, special. Because <laughs> they got a baby. Anyway, uh, my mother fixed sugar cookies one morning while I was at the barn. My job was to, the old dude's job at a younger age was to go milk our, we, at one time we had two jerseys, then we had one, I, can't, I think we just had one at that point in time. I was about in the fourth or fifth grade, and uh, I'd go down and milk the cow that day, you know, 15 or 20 minutes and, and feed the, we had a stud horse that we kept pinned up, and, and if we had any other horses or cows that we were, you know, working on for injuries or, or cuts or whatever, they, I'd take care of them, you know, feed them and make sure they had water. And all during that time, our pond was right there by the barn. And, and I'm a Pisces, and I'm drawn to water. I'm a fish. So there wasn't a morning that didn't go by. I don't care if it was raining, snowing. I had to wet a line in that pond. So that that one morning, my mother was making me sugar cookies, and I got the cow milked and had the milk there and had it covered up. We just put it in a pail and put some cheesecloth over the top of it, keep the flies and dust and stuff out of it. We uh, and I sat there on the barn, well, in our feed room had a wooden floor. So I went. And uh, grabbed up a couple of worms at a, a spot we could always dig up worms by the barn and uh, I had about a five foot little it was a willow pole that I'd cut out of a willow tree I mean it wasn't no, wasn't no, wasn't no fancy rod and reel there wasn't none of that stuff it was just a willow limb and they were flexible so they were great to use as little fishing poles and if everybody anybody's ever used a willow pole to go fishing let me know I, I know I'm not the only one that used those so Anyway, I, I put me a little, I had a little old cork, uh, I don't even know where it came from, in a real small little perch hook. I just wanted to catch a few perch, that, that would get me going for the day. And uh, I caught a little bluegill about three inches long, I of course threw him back. Next thing I know, my cork's just slowly moving away and I pulled up on him and expecting to yank another perch out of the pond. And I didn't hit the, the limb just bent over in the water and was just thrashing. I thought, oh my God, it was about three foot deep or so. I, it, our pond was kind of muddy. And uh, there was a there was a big old channel cat, about five and a half pounds. And I drug his old butt out on the, I drug his old, I drug that catfish out on, out on the bank. And uh, to be honest, I was scared. I ain't never caught no catfish that big. I'd been catching pollywogs, or we, that's what we call mud cats about six inches long and they would fend the crap out of you but I was used to that so I heard my mother our house is about 300 yards from the, the barn and she said are you coming these cookies are almost ready and I said yeah I'll be there in just a minute so I went to the house you know n nobody nobody had cell phones to take pictures but I would love to send a video of, uh, of me coming to the house a bucket full of milk in the left hand and holding this uh, willow pole that was bent over, dragging this catfish <laughs> through the mud and the dirt up there. She said, what are you doing? I said, well, I, I wanted to check. I want to see if the fish are biting. So, and this is before school. And I said, I caught this catfish, and I don't know what to do. And she said, I don't know. Let me call your dad. So uh, she called dad. He was at work. Uh, this is this is dark 30. This, this is 6 o'clock in the morning. And... Uh, he said, well, just put it in the bathtub. Don't throw, don't throw, throw it back because that would be good eating. So we had well water. We had artesian well. So it was nice and cool and clean. And So Mother filled up the bathtub, or almost filled it up, and we put that catfish in him. By the time I went to school, he was swimming around like looking for another worm, I guess. We got home. I told all my buddies and a couple of my, my buddies' parents had brought them over to look at this big catfish I'd caught. Them. I think they thought I was making it up. They couldn't believe it. I mean, this, this I, I was 10 years old. Uh, you know, I was a little scrawny kid and I brought this five pound catfish in. So dad got home and it's so funny. I mean, the, the, the simple things in life back then were great. And uh, 
he took that catfish and rolled it up in some uh, wet burlap. We took it into the town of Argyle, which was about six miles away from our house, and showed my aunt and uncle, my uncle Bob. He was he loved the catfish. He he was he was a commercial catfisherman at one time when you could do that in Texas, and uh, my cousin Ted and my aunt Jean and the, you know they were just going on how big this catfish was, and, and I, I think back, he was a big catfish for a little boy to, to catch. And then we drove down the street. The closest house to our, our house was my aunt, Mil, uh, aunt Mildred, and um, her husband Bill and, and my cousin Billy uh, showed them. And of course, we took it to the house and cleaned him. And uh, my mother fried that catfish that night. And I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> that was some good stuff. Dang, I, it was just, it was great. But the memories are better. So. Sugar cookies can bring on lots of good memories to an old dude. So I've let this set for a minute because I'm telling you all my stories, and which is good. It, give, it gives it time for the moisture to get throughout the dough. So, all right, let's see here. I could take two spoons. Uh, I could, whatever. You take a hand, just reach in and grab them. But I've got this fancy dancy deal. I used to bake cupcakes and sell them along with cakes. And uh, come on, fill up. I'm gonna take a roll these in my hand, so. Just kind of will portion them out kind of close to the same size it just makes them when you're baking them uh, they'll bake a little bit more even you're gonna put these about two inches apart once I put them on the once I put them on the, the pan and I've got a parchment line pan yeah I could just use butter but I like my old baking pan I, I've got an old I'll show it in just a minute. It's just an old baking pan. and I, I bake everything in the world in it. It's crusty and dusty and food patina all over. I guess that's what you call it nowadays. That's the new word, patina. And uh, I say now, I've never, I've fixed this recipe before just for sugar cookies, but I have never, never, never put pumpkin into them. I just got a feeling it's going to be like really good. Boy, it's going to turn out great. The last one here. All right. Empty bowl. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just roll these into balls. Yeah, they roll really easy. That's coming apart a little bit, but no problem. dough that flour that didn't get mixed in it would probably be fine but I'm not gonna let it get in there I, I have never speeded a video up I'm gonna try to speed this up when I when I publish it I, I know there's a way to do it I just I cook by the seat of my pants I've just learned how to produce these shows and add some some effects and all that and, and I'm not going to go crazy and add lightning bolts and that, that's just not my style but uh, I'm going to try to when I edit this speed this process up of me making these dough balls oh quick, speaking of dough balls uh, I'm going to make dough balls one of these days when I was in high school, well, you knew, I was, I was an avid fisherman, and I, I got to going and fishing for carp, and I fell in love with that. Dad learned it, and I loved it. Carp and catfish, but mainly carp, I didn't care. The catfish were easy to catch, but I wanted these big old carp. 
15 or 20 pounds. And we, we had a fishing barge, which is a, it's no longer there, but it's just a place you go out and you paid, I think, a dollar a pole at that point in time. And uh, you could fish for 24 hours. It was heated and air conditioned and it cooled and it had a cafe on it, you know, everything, uh, everything a person would need. So, so here's what I'm gonna do here. Anyway, I made, I got to making carp bait, carp bait. I had three or four different recipes. And, uh, and yes, I'm just sprinkling more pumpkin like it didn't have enough. And I'm just gonna roll these around up here in this pumpkin, pumpkin spice. And I've got a parchment lime paper over here. I'm gonna put these three or four inches apart. They don't spread a lot, they'll spread a little bit. Anyway, I got to making carton bait when I was in high school. Read back to my story that I'm forgetting I'm telling. And, uh, started selling it. It was Texas Best Cart Bait. Had three or four, and it even had a catfish bait. Uh, it was made out of, I had one recipe that used Sweeties, the Wheaties cereal. They were great. I used Sweeties and uh, also cottonseed meal. So let me get these kind of spread out here. something to mash them down with. I don't want to take that garlic. I'm afraid that garlic will... Let's see if this, this salt deal will work. Oh, yeah. Just to get a head start on it. And, of course, you could take and... You could sprinkle sugar on them. You could, you could put sprinkles on them. I don't know if they have pumpkin spice sprinkles, but you get, if you're doing sugar cookies, you could sure put some sprinkles on them at this point. So that's it, boys and girls. Wish me luck. In an oven at 325, I've had it preheating since I uh, went and put that stuff in the microwave. And uh, gosh, I realize that I'm over here. And maybe you can see what I was doing. I would just taking and mashing everything, every, all of these down with the, the bottom of this sea salt container. And before that, I had sprinkled some pumpkin. Um, all right. Well, let's get these in the oven. He's going to bake for about 10 minutes, and I'll bring you back. But it'll just give me enough time to do a cleanup, and I'll be back with you. All right, they're out of the oven. I'm going to let them cool for a minute. They're still super soft. Uh, I lifted up the corner of one with a spatula and it was kind of browning underneath. I just turned the stove off and left it in there for about five minutes. So let me show you what they look like at this point. Yeah, they're looking good. There you go. I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna do some extra, as I call it, extra. I've got one tea, one teaspoon of sugar and one teaspoon of uh, pumpkin spice while they're warm. I'm just gonna sprinkle some on top. Not all of these, because my wife is a diabetic, and I'm actually gonna make her some with Splenda and see how it works. That baking Splenda works pretty good. I've done peanut butter cookies with it before. While it's hot, it will uh, let that 
sugar and cinnamon stick, or sugar and cinnamon, cinnamon, pumpkin spice, spice, pump, cinnamon and sugar and pumpkin spice, spice, man, it's can't even get that out, uh, stick to it, you get a spatula, you've got to let these cool for a little bit, because they're going to be soft, like you, right here, I, I was, I had my hot pad and I was pushing in on the side. You can see where it mashed into it. And they're hardening up now pretty good. Let's see. I'm going to what they look like. Oh yeah, perfect. They're brown underneath. Just do this to make sure they're releasing good. comes to get her coffee this morning. She loves pumpkin. Last night for dinner she had a cup of coffee with pumpkin spice uh, creamer in it. And I'll tell you boys and girls, I'm anxious to taste these because <laughs> my mother never made pumpkin cookies, only she made pumpkin pies. And so uh, I was thinking last night I would like to bake some cookies we were watching something on TV and they were eating cookies. I, I said, man, that looks so good. She said, yeah, I wish I had some now. Anyway, I'm going to taste this this bad one that got smashed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat the evidence. So let me move the camera around here. Let's see what. There you go. Let's test out the broken one. When I go to Tom Thomas where I shop, it's like a Randall's or big grocery store chain. They have a, where they're baking their cookies in the mornings, they will have uh, broken cookies, free for the taking. Now I have little plastic cups full, so I'm gonna eat my evidence that I broke this cookie. It's hardening up pretty good. I, I like crispy cookies. I'm not the biggest fan of chewy, but this is still gonna be still chewy because it's hot. Mmm. Mmm, goodness. That has the same flavor as my mother's sugar cookies. I mean, why shouldn't it bake the same with the addition of that pumpkin? Goodness. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I've just finished my cup of coffee, but I may have to pour another cup of black coffee to go with this. Man, this is really good. Mmm. It's getting crunchy as it's cooling off. So I will tell you, if you want to make sugar cookies, just don't put the the, the um, pumpkin spice in it. And make the best sugar cookies. They turn out about nope, about two inches around. Perfect little size, got three bites, or, or if you're a kid, maybe, maybe t uh, five bites. If you're an old dude, maybe two bites. Or maybe one bite. Anyway, but if you want to do a pumpkin, just add the pumpkin in like I did. I'll try to get a, a recipe together and post it. Um, and I'll try to do it under the, the uh, description. If I don't get that uh, up, I'll at least have a photo of my uh, of my, uh, directions on how I cooked it, 350 degrees. It cooked for about 16 minutes and then I turned it off and let it sit in the stove. Looked under it, peeked and made sure it was a little brown coming under, which it, which it was. And so They're hardening up really good. So Let me get these plated up and we'll see what they look like on a plate. There they are, boys and girls. The ones on my left right here are the ones that had the pumpkin spice and sugar added extra um, at the end of the bake. The ones on the right just had the pumpkin spice added into the sugar and the butter, the original mix. I really like the ones with it on the outside, but I had to test one that did not have it on the outside, and yes, it's really good too. So I hope you enjoyed this recipe. 
please share to your friends that like to bake and cook. Comment. Have you ever made these before? Have you ever, ever had pumpkin spice sugar cookies? And remember, you can just make sugar cookies with this same recipe. And if you're new to the channel, I really appreciate you stopping by and listening to the old dude and his tales. They're all real. Nothing made up in my life. I'm an open book. And I, if you are been here for a while, thank you for being part of it. We were at over 600 uh, subscribers this morning, which is great. I, I, I was... I was always wishing I could make a hundred subscribers, so this is this this fills the old dude's heart, makes me happy. So hope y'all have a wonderful day. I'm gonna finish this regular cookie with a cup of black coffee. This pumpkin sugar cookie recipe made about ten cookies. Yeah, there's just I think there's eight left. You know, old dude's gotta try his food to see if it tastes good. Thank you for riding along with the old dude this morning, riding shotgun, and listening to my tales and video recipes. Thank you so much.